Hello everyone and thank you for joining us here in the Zero Plane. I noticed while editing the previous episodes that we never truly gave credit to other podcasts we had mentioned, so here they are. The Ever Entertaining, The Adventure Zone, please check them out. The Fun and Rules as Written, Roll for Combat, I do enjoy them. And the delightful The Tableverse. So, to the episode today... One snag of using Roll20.com for this podcast is that you, the listener, can't see anything. Weird, right? So the overall visual you need to know is that there's a super massive public bus being chased by tank-like trucks with hydraulic arms that have claws at the end of them. That's pretty much it. Uh, And the bus is running through an entire derelict city. And two last things, some rules were relaxed for the narrative, and in Starfinder there are chase rules and tactical rules for vehicles. Which is to say that ramming with a vehicle requires a piloting check of the target's KAC. We managed to get a little confused while doing that. Anyway, thank you for making it to the official episode 3, and enjoy today's episode in The Zero Plane. In this episode, our heroes see firsthand what the Panquake public transportation is truly capable of, and find more breadcrumbs from the loaf of bread that is the Blood Demon Toilet Monster. Okay, so everybody just fought a big stupid centaur. Everyone jumped back on. The cop car exploded. That's that's where you're at now. What do you guys do? And then we just got rolled up on by the meat mobiles, right? Yep, they're just they're still honking at you maliciously. Uh do we do we recognize these things? Do they have any kind of like gang marking type of deal? No, they're just like the most generic thing like you've seen a million of them it's just like seeing someone wearing a bandana it just it's got so many different meanings and who knows what gang it actually belongs to or if they're just really really rude drivers so they just like shop at the walmart of like mad max mobiles oh, pretty much okay. pretty okay. much <laughs> just, yeah, all right. they have the mad max walmart <laughs> it's like the, the only things that survive apocalypses besides costco all right, all right. Uh, Secretary Mary tells you, like, uh, guys, that's also bad news. Nothing pops out when she says it, but the little sad remnants of the turrets, the argument to turrets, kind of, like, shift slightly, as if they wanted to move. Right. <laughs> the empty shells of them. What, what happened to the captain? He, like, sealed up the cockpit No, the doors, the doors open, uh, but no one has said they're going in there, and no one said they're looking in there. Uh, it's... What what's in there? I turn around. What you see is Gus has been impaled by the murder lance. He flew out of his chair and he is pinned to the wall. The bus is no longer being driven. Oh my god. The bus has no captain. Sharon S, you look in and you see her putting on armor and what she's the like <laughs> Alright, you guys, I know this is my job and I really hate this, but I have a favor to ask. Any of you have an extra gun? Gus doesn't have one I can use. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I wave my hand. But uh, it's uh, it's uh, seems to be locked by some kind of, you know, law enforcement protocol that I can't use it. You might try asking it nicely, though. Well, if you have a different one, I would very much like to use that one. I might even be able to help you uh, talk to your gun. Okay, I'll give her the, my coil sniper rifle. All right, you give her the coil sniper rifle. All right, and she walks out in her super awesome heavy armor uh, that she acquired from Gus's uh, box of goodies. So um, am I not over encumbered anymore? Correct. You are not over encumbered. Let's let me adjust it. Yeah. So you don't have to delete it. You just mark it to uh, from a quantity of one to a quantity of zero. So let me get that for you. Cool. Number zero. Yep, and now you're good. So now you you do have the, the Plasma G series, or actually the Plasma G 
Audrey Series 21. That's Audrey. Oh, God. <laughs> it's the Audrey Series. <laughs> and then as soon as uh, you switch weapon or you give her the weapon, she's like, okay, uh, I guess we're going We're going up top. Follow me. Really quick. Um, uh, was it uh, Rust? You took damage last time, didn't you? Did I? I? The only person that took damage was Gusty. That was you. Oh, okay. Oh, never mind then. I'm all right. Yeah. And if you click on yourself, they'll see you've got one stamina left. Oh, I'm, you, I'm very aware of my HP. Yeah. So you haven't... There's been no time for a rest because yeah, these, yeah, yeah. these murder trucks or the, the thrasher trucks. Sharon S. is uh, heading up to the, the top. Um, she says, all right, uh, really? I could use I could use two of your help. And then Gus, the bus captain, he says, hey, does anyone know how to pilot this? Well, oh. does anyone have, does it, I need a driver, like, stat. Like, like, is he pinned, like, harmlessly, or is he, like, impaled? He is both impaled and pinned. So the murder lance <laughs> is literally sticking out of his chest. Okay. Lucky for him, he's undead. Oh, well, that is fortunate. Uh, so when the lance hit him, all those little tendrils shot out, so he's pinned and then extra pinned. Okay. It was, did I just forget that happened, that he got hit by the murder lance? No, what happened was the, the mentor and the cop car exploded oh. in the front of the bus. The murder lance flew oh. through the, the front of the bus, the, the windshield, and so, pierced him. Shrapnel, okay. okay. Bad shrapnel. Um, Elgar steps forward and says, I have some okay piloting skills. Uh, all right. Well, just... Just hop in the seat there, I guess. Okay. How okay? <laughs> Wait a like, second. <laughs> like one skill rank piloting. <laughs> oh. Like I like I passed my driver's test <laughs> for class C for class C vehicles, but this thing is like a class D and a half. <laughs> I don't I don't know what what. Quadruple, triple. How many? How many levels is this, Sharon? S? Oh, this is well. It's four stories, and this thing weighs several metric tons upon several metric tons. So, yeah, it's definitely out of my class license, but I got a license. And Gus just looks at you, and he says, "Yeah, uh, oh boy, I'm probably gonna have to like student teach you or something." Oh, jeez, Sharon. Sharon, dear, I don't suppose there's any chance you have experience with it, is there? N no, I just, I shoot every now and then on my days off just because, well, look look at the normal ass day I have, uh, but I don't, I take the public bus for a reason. All right, so while you guys are chatting, I, I look out the window and how are our pursuers doing? They haven't like... moved yet, but they are right on the bus's tail. All right. And you kind of... Feel the bus shifting ever so slightly to the right. You kind of feel it veering. And Gus oh, says, right, okay. hey guys, uh, someone should hold on to the wheel. Elgar rushes forward to hold on to the wheel and right the ship. Elgar, give me a piloting check. Okay. That is a six. <laughs> the bus veers <laughs> just roughly. goes right into a brick wall and we all the, die. No, the I'm bus sure. veers roughly to the right. Oh god, okay. Uh I jump forward and help. Oh my gosh. Uh if you're assisting, it can only be a plus two and it's a DC ten. You got it, but that only brings Austin's piloting to an eight. The bus is still veering nice. to the right. We're not rolling initiative yet. All right, what do you guys do? Uh so Okay. <laughs> um listen, listen. We I, need a pilot in our fucking crew. <laughs> I I can pilot the bus if one of you will just make sure no one walks in on me sure that's a really weird yeah. thing to say <laughs> well you're stuck to the wall so all right hey computer yes okay <laughs> can you please scan for anywhere we could go anywhere that'll uh rough terrain uh, fine Guys, I hate this computer. Okay, I found something. <laughs> it sounds like it needs a software update. You can... <laughs> no, I just don't like Gus. There is an outpost. I've identified it as the remnants of Outpost 69. And Gus goes, huh, nice. Of course. 
I do not get that joke. All right. Well, veer off to the right some more. We're already doing it. Did we come from Outpost 87? Like, yes. Or... Okay, okay, gotcha. What, uh... All right, I'm going to go and walk up to these controls here. Uh, is there any chance in this rough terrain there's a cliff handy out there? Uh, no, it's all you see. And you can see out of this. Like, there's the, the big mm -hmm. TV there. Like, that's showing you what's outside. Uh, it's pretty darn flat. It's very much wastelandy and deserty, but it's got, like rougher rocks and some weird oasis things um is there actually a bunch of uh guns there yes there are oh. weapons in there okay mm -hmm. uh that's also where sharon s got the armor okay so uh so you guys go ahead um, i'll wait until you guys are good with piloting i'll talk to sharon s all right um so gusty do you feel any more confident than i do piloting this thing I'm fine piloting the thing just so long as, you know, someone doesn't walk in on me and talk too much. All right, I'm getting really <laughs> weirded out. Why Why do you need to be alone? Because I can't leave the room, and I, have to, yes. I have to look at you. Are you going to be doing something weird to my computer? Not that I care. I care. Gus, do you want that lance out of your chest? That seems to be making you cross. <laughs> well, to be fair... It is. It's in a. It it hurts. Well, if you can even try, I would appreciate oh. it. But I don't, oh, it does not look like it. It looks like it has fused him to the wall. It does not. I'm telling you straight up. <laughs> it does not look like you can assist him at the moment. Okay, so he's out of the picture. Okay. Um. So that's a thing that Dusty has that nobody can watch him while he's doing it. Here, I'll close my but, eyes. But I would be obliged. <laughs> yeah, I was saying, like, can we take his undead head with us? <laughs> well, he's he's undead, but that would kill him. Okay, no, no, <laughs> like, like, we're, we're at what point like an undead dies? Okay, like... <laughs> please don't decapitate me. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Um. Gusty, is it just like, sorry? Yeah, <laughs> it, it, is it just more of a like you don't want anybody to come in and hurt you type of thing, or do you have some 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 weird android stuff you got to do? Uh, oh, it's just you know got a bad history with talking to people. Oh wait, are you Gusty Adams? Are you the Gusty Adams? I mean. Hello. I raise a frog eyebrow. Get out. No, not you, Gusty. Algar, you, yeah, uh, you, you gotta leave. Sorry. Well, <laughs> I feel thoroughly confused and conflicted about this situation. Listen, there's a lot of legal stuff. You, yeah. You don't understand back out. if you'd met him, though, Gus. Anyway, don't talk to me. Gonna drive this, this bus All right. here. Nope, you're driving. No, ugh. All right, I'm closing my eyes. I'll be quiet. God, I can't believe I have Gusty in my chair. <laughs> and I'm going to start driving. And, and as I'm driving, I'm going to start chatting with Gus. Like, so how how long you been been driving this thing? What <laughs> station you you grow up in? Well, I'm pretty sure the bus system was established at AG 70 some other. I've been driving since then. <laughs> Honestly, I forgot how old I am. I originally came from Eox. And you look pretty old. While that's happening, uh, Sharon S. has climbed up and out. Oh, right. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's fine. We were just talking for 10 minutes. <laughs> well, uh, anyway. Of years off course. I want to go, I, I want to go help her. I, I want to see if she can help unlock my rifle. Elgar follows. <laughs> Sharon S, please, I could use some help. I, uh, I'm a lot better when I have a functioning gun. Do you think you can help me unlock this? Uh, and then I, 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 I guess. hold the gun out, out to her. Uh, gun, can you help my friend? He needs he needs some assistance. He needs to use you. Uh, you're not my owner. Where is my owner? Where is Officer Tuckus? I think uh, Officer Tuckus is dead. Listen, it was an accident, and listen, we just, we're in a, we're a bit of a giant pickle, and we could really use whatever the heck kind of gun you are. You look real fancy. Oh, thank you. Well, I do 
I do try. I really don't understand how that works. Ross, do you say anything? Uh, I say, uh, if it helps at all, I'm part of the bounty hunting uh, truce. And I uh, I know that we tend to be deputies of law enforcement when numbers are down and stuff like that. So if you can give me any leeway there, any emergency protocols, I, could really ha I would really like to use you to help avenge your former owner. Oh, okay. I'm going to need to do a retina scan. Please put your eye at the barrel. <laughs> oh. It goes against against uh, every uh, instinct in his body, but he points the sniper rifle <laughs> barrel right into his eye. <laughs> this, this should go well. <laughs> Bang, you're dead. Ha ha. Uh. Sorry, everything needed to happen already. I was just, I was just messing with you. <laughs> Gun unlocked. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> and Sharon has just shakes her head like, man, what did the police officers do to these guns? I don't know. I'm going to see if there's a mute button first thing. But <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right uh, back to, to Gus. Uh, Gus and Gusty. Oh, my God. I'm so bored. So, Gus, you got a brother? Like, alive? Just in general. I don't think so, but technically... I have a, a first son. What's it just the first one, huh? No, no, no. The uninhumed armada, you know, you gotta raise, you gotta raise more undead. And when you raise them, they're your children. Listen, it's a whole thing. I've got one son. He's my first son. All right. Well, you sound happy enough with it. Listen, I've been in that bus for years. There's a reason why I've been there. Any other questions? Uh, what's your favorite color? I don't even know if I can see in color. Hang on. <laughs> he opens his <laughs> eyes and he looks around. I don't, I don't even know. What as soon fuck? as he opens his eyes, I'm going to snap at him like, hey, what I say? No, I'm sorry. Okay, my favorite color is <laughs> black. Reddit, why are you talking to me so much? My favorite color is black with spots of red and yellow in succession. That sounds depressing. It's actually quite interesting. Mm -hmm. All right, make a pilot check. DC 27. Good lord. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and roll this and put my expertise into it. Ooh. Ooh. All right, let me... What is my... The expertise is 1d6, right? Correct. Oh, my God. Close, but not enough. You got a 25. Uh, okay. Uh, the bus starts rumbling as you're running over tons of rocks. Uh, it's still pretty smooth because it's giant, but as you run over the rocks, it starts veering further to the right. Uh... Actually, no, that's the, that's the direction we want to go. Remember, we want to go to Outpost 69. All right, cutting back to Goal and Elgar. What do you guys do? Um, what do you want to do on Elgar? I already kind of that did my thing. I just kind of want to do a perception check to see if there's any stuff on the outside of the bus. Uh, there, we'll go ahead and roll it. Just get a general awareness for my surroundings. Uh, you notice that two of the trucks are gone and only three are maliciously honking at you. The other trucks have disappeared somewhere. Hmm. Hmm. I don't like that. So now there's only three tailing behind the truck as you guys are barreling down this, this rocky terrain. And the terrain doesn't seem to bother them at all. All right. And with that, uh, Gusty, make me another uh, piloting check. DC 28 now. Oh, Lord. Oh, boy. Oh. Okay. Hold on. How many times can I do this? Uh... I think it's as long as you have... Uh, Oh, resolve yeah, yeah, points. As long as... as long as you have one resolve point, you can do it. So 23 doesn't get it. Oh, and God. And we're traveling. Whoa. Whoa. All right. This is going to be kind of strange at first. So many skeletons. It's a big fucking bus. It's, <laughs> it's really, really big. Yeah, there oh you go. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go back. Vroom, vroom. Oh, God, I, okay. have, I have bus moving powers. So as you veered uh, into Outpost 69, uh, you see more trucks have gathered on either side of you. And Gus says, all right, we're just going to start just start running into all these buildings. It'll slow them down. <laughs> and it's really going to fuck them up. All right. And with that, uh, <laughs> Sharon S. says, all right, guys, if we can aim for the windows, we can absolutely uh, shoot the, the drivers. Okay? 
We're, we're on sure. board. Elgar, what kind of gun do you have? Absolutely. Elgar, what's your gun? <laughs> I've got a... Uh... Some grenades and a, a little gun, I think. Oh. I'm looking. <laughs> a little gun and you're cutting wit. All right. Well, that's probably not going to help. Here, take take these grenades, and she gives you ten grenades. Is there anything uh, I can, like, steady myself on? So the bus is big enough. You don't... It is so big, you are not feeling anything. You're feeling as smooth as standing on normal ground. So mm. you're able to take to perch and snipe off of the top of this bus. Sure. Um, she gives Austin 10 more grenades and she says, all right, this is just kind of the drill. They're going to try and attach to the side of the bus and start ripping into it. And that's that's going to be the bad news. Uh, typically, <laughs> others are going to start driving around, try and do extra damage to the bus. So uh, just get ready. Uh, all right, I'd say um, to my cold-blooded brother, like, I'll get the far ones, you get, you guard the interior. And with that, we're all going to roll initiative. <laughs> I got one, damn. I got a seven. Eleven. I got a 6.03. So Austin's first. Elgar. So Ross, where you're going to... I was th- I was just trying to think of how I could take advantage of having a sniper rifle and you're a little more short range. Gotcha. I don't know how far you can throw a grenade. 20 feet. But... Hmm. Yeah, so I think I could work on the outside ones and you guard the inside, kind of. Real quick, I just want to, like, check the surroundings on this top level of the bus to see if there's anything. It's just flat as flat can be. It's a a giant moving rectangle uh, cube thing. So it's, it's just as flat on the top as it is the sides and the bottom. Flat as flat can be. Well... Elgar leans into it, he gets up to the edge, and he says, here goes nothing, and he chucks a grenade. Uh, if you aim for one of the intersections, the DC is 5 to hit. Gotcha. Andrew, can you see the health of the bus? Yes, it has 636 health, in case anyone was wondering. Here goes nothing. Well, <laughs> you... Rolled a 3. You missed the DC 5. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> The grenade, so... the grenade <laughs> tinks down and falls down next to the wheel, but it's far enough away where you don't get hit. But the the bus takes three fire damage, so you didn't hurt. You did not hurt the bus. You just set the bus on fire. It's now cool looking. <laughs> just keep that up. Just keep loving those. Oh God, sweet flame. The wheel is on fire. <laughs> so that was Elgar. Now Gull's turn. I'm gonna try a full attack on this one up here hang on so take note of the weapon you are currently oh. wielding it is unwieldy and cannot do full attacks but uh, okay they don't have cover which means they are much easier to hit sure all right um well then i can move i like move a little bit closer and try to go for a window shot or whatever she was saying to go through the windshield at them are you going for the top yeah, the far one. I see. Yep, you can see him. Yeah, um, and I will do that now with my... Don't let me down, Audrey. Uh, don't worry. This is going to be my impression of you. <laughs> First impressions. <laughs> First impressions are always big on a blind date, so don't let me down, Audrey. I swear this never happens. Oh, no. <laughs> you let me down, Audrey. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The bullet right. goes whizzing by harmlessly and hits the sand next to the thrasher truck <laughs> all right <laughs> i you rolled a natural two so i mean don't feel too bad about that one that was yeah, all that sorry. was audrey <laughs> that was audrey just 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 a little nervous the first date we'll warm up to each other okay uh now it's gusty's turn i guess i'm driving through this building huh oh right you need to give me a piloting check of course okay that's gonna be Ooh. 20 it, then I'm, I'm just gonna keep up with this yeah this it is a 28 thing okay that'll be a 32 so is this just like i need a little setting here gm like there's pretty abandoned like how it looks or we just like yeah so this- what it looks like is a whole plethora of just buildings and roads you don't know if it's residential you don't know if it's business but it's got a bunch of dead trees a bunch of dead um giant skeletons of desert animals that have just walked here and died uh or were killed here you do see a bunch of skeletons 
just kind of yeah. all over the place. Yeah. There's really mm. <laughs> no clear explanation as to why they are there, but you do see them. Like they're oh. kind. Of, some of them are red. Some of them are normal. But that's all you see in this. Uh, r- really quick, I'm gonna ask Gus. Uh, the, uh, am I about to drive through a mess of your people in here? Oh no, no! This has been abandoned for a long time. No one's here. I mean, skeletons, uh, they used to be people, but, I mean, they're not even undead, so it's just a bunch of bones. All right, I just don't want you getting mad at me. If no I... one here. If someone's here, they're looting, and then they get what they deserve, you know? If you insist, and then I just hit the gas or the lever or whatever it is. Listen, I'll vouch for you. And Gus keeps his eyes closed. For people who are just listening to the podcast, <laughs> <laughs> we're actually just going to be driving through what looks like a, every city's bad neighborhood. The <laughs> shut down industry, space Detroit is about to get leveled. So. Yeah, Gus is, is saying like to <laughs> go through these old buildings, and they're not very tall. You can see most of the roads. Uh, typically, they're the tallest one is two stories high, and... Uh, for the most part, everything's pretty pretty low. So, Gus is pretty sure it's not going to affect the the bus. Is it more of like a monster truck or like mm-hmm. just it, barely? It is size things? category colossal, apparently. So it's <laughs> yep. it's like a purple worm almost from D anD. d This is this is okay. like ancient dragon sized bus. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> As you hit the building, it explodes into all sorts of debris. Oops. Who would have thought? Okay, really quick. Do I know anything in general about the way bases are structured? Like, is there is there a part of one I might run into that the bus can't go through? Nothing here is going to stop this bus. <laughs> that is both a blessing and a curse. Nothing here. All right. So as you hit the the building, I'm going to need reflex checks from Elgar and Gol. Okay. I pray to Keanu Reeves. It is a DC 10. (laughs) (laughs) Got a seven. (laughs) Austin Austin falls off the bus. Oh, shit. I I didn't. This is the first turn, guys. No, it was a DC 10. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. Just barely kept my froggy feet on the bus. Uh, so you land in an alley on a basketball court as the building is just falling down next to you. Um, <laughs> Ghoul sees it. Sharon S does not. Oh, my God. Can I try to, like, save him with my froggy tongue or some shit? <laughs> Man, he, he was, like, 15 feet away from you. So, uh, no, I don't yeah, think so. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think it goes that far. I don't think I... That might hurt yeah, you. Shit. Actually, it would just pull you down. Oh, my gosh. That was Gusty's turn. Uh, Sharon S. turns around, and she fires two shots. Ooh, one hits. Which one did she hit? Sharon S. is a badass roller. Uh, this, this far one. Yeah, for real. Yeah. Ooh, for five damage. Now it's the Thrasher Truck's turn. Uh, One goes speeding down some of the streets. Two of them position themselves right next to the the bus. Two more decide to take to the streets. It's like in protest or? (laughs) Yeah, they're taking to the streets. Uh, One of them flies down and, and you almost lose sight of it. All right, that is their turn. Up next, we have Elgar. All right. Um, Do I land... On my feet, or yes, you am have I the descent like thrusters. Tumbled down. Okay. So you you landed just fine, right where you are on that basketball court next to the bus that's gotcha. steamrolling all these buildings. Can I do a quick scan of my surroundings. Is this like an alleyway next to the ba- basketball yes, court? Yes. So that there is an alleyway, but you can see there's a thrasher truck kind of revving its engine, like it's aiming its car at you. Yeah. What you can do is go into a building. Huh. Um, any, is there anything in this alleyway? Can I do a perception check, like uh, rope it just, or something that I could throw back? <laughs> what, like, like just throw something at? There's any, like, there's something at it? No, I'm just, I'm just anticipating the bus careening down and leaving me behind. So I'm kind of like, is there anything I could throw back onto the bus to like hook myself back on? Uh, Gusty had the rope, but there's nothing in the alleyway, <laughs> is what I'm asking. 
Like, oh. There's no debris or any. I, I guess it would have been like, oh, 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 oh. to toss some rope to the people about to go on top of a moving bus. Uh, all you know is there's probably a seatbelt in the car in front of you uh, with your perception check of 15. But furthermore, with the perception of check of 15, if you stay in this alley, this truck is going to hit you for lots and lots of damage. It's kind of like you staring down the barrel of a tank. So is this building occupied? Can I still be like duck You into can this dive one? into that building, yes. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just dive the hell in there <laughs> as soon as I can. All right. When you dive, you instantly see puddle of blood mm. and two bloodhounds kind of mesh mm. together, like lots of rubble in this in this building here. Lots of bloody footprints way down the hall. There's a skeleton at the very end of the hall too, uh, with weird blood spatter on the wall it's laying next to. Uh, and that's that's all you see. I just want to use maybe my my monocle to investigate the bloodhound. You use your monocle and you detect magic emanating further down the hallway into the next zone of what the building is because it's a, a long rectangular building. So that's mm. where you're, you're detecting some magic. Mm, well, don't have much options here. I'm going to go check that out next turn. Goal, you're next. They all look basically identical. None of them look like a leader or anything. Yeah, like... they're all the same. All right, well, I'll just shoot at the same one again. Why not? Keep it simple. Plasma. Come on, Audrey. There you go. The wooden shield just shatters. And your bullet goes through the passenger, and the the passenger stops moving. Nice. Passenger was holding up something. The passenger just goes limp. That a girl. <laughs> she says, "Thank, Thank you." you. <laughs> uh, and Sharon S also shoots, and because she's got your other sniper rifle, she's gonna shoot um, twice. She doesn't do it. Actually, the gun jams. She misses, and the gun jams. So she has. Can I get like a prerequisite with unwieldy weapons? Like, or no, or all that sheet? does is it represents like a big gun that needs to cool down or has like can only shoot only has one in the chamber. The trade off is that's usually a very good gun. The trade off with yours is they don't get cover and you do a lot of damage. Yeah, now that you're out in the open, the sniping is really doing the trick. All right, that was Gull's turn. Uh, Gusty, let's 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 do it. Oh boy, here we go. Okay, so here's here's how I want to do this if the piloting goes well. I I want to try and drive down the center of this street, basically. The one in front of you? Uh, the yeah, the one to the front of me and to the right. So oh, I see. Kinda, I want to try and run them a little bit into this building down here. I got you. Yeah. And then, you know, kind of go down a way where they can't flank me without driving through buildings themselves. Gotcha. It's it's still a DC 28. All right. Here we go. Holy Bam. shit. That is 28 on the dot. You get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's that. Some proficiency there. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh... <laughs> So as you do that, they keep up with you, and both of them, they actually go into the building as well. Ha <laughs> ha, you've fallen into my building trap. The building trap. Uh, but it doesn't seem to do very much. They they both take 10 damage as the building falls on their vehicles. All right, that's, that's actually a little bit better than what I thought would happen. Uh, but they're still going strong. Okay, that was Gusty. Oh, it's their turn. Mm. Their big arms finally reach into you. Ah. The first one makes an attack. Oh, my God. On the bus. And he hits pretty hard. Oh, what's the EAC? EAC is 24. These are perfectly tailored to public buses. Uh, the claws are made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the claws are pretty much laser claws. So you take 25 damage from that one. The one behind at the back right wheel also attacks. Does hit it for 19 more damage. It's a 25 and 19. Correct. Just as the one behind your back left wheel drives up to you, also attacks, does not hit. You see in the distance a small speck, and before you realize it, a truck comes barreling at you kamikaze style and runs into the front of the bus. 
Oh. Ooh, shit. Did it survive? It rams you. That's an interesting choice. For <laughs> 47 damage if uh, you don't meet the piloting DC. Uh, and I the piloting... Oh, wait. It has to do that. Oh, it has to pilot. Come on, low roll. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Nope. It doesn't get it. <laughs> so instead, <laughs> it, it veers <laughs> off course towards its friends. Good lord. Austin, I have not thought about that game in like 20 years holy shit <laughs> that is some old school twisted metal just for the sake of audio someone just made a twisted metal reference I very strongly associate the Norths with twisted metal <laughs> That's fair. this is true twisted metal 2 all the way <laughs> uh, okay and that's this that's the vibe I'm getting right now. Andrew, as, as you, you drive, uh, Gus says, Uh, what? What did I just hear? What was that? Oh, it's really better if you keep your eyes closed. Oh, God, don't ruin my bus, please. <sighs> I think we're past that. We're friends, though, Gus. It'll be all right. He kind of opens up one eye, then shuts it just to see if you were looking. Oh, I was. <laughs> You're just staring at him. <laughs> As oh I my gosh. Drive through a building. <laughs> oh man. Sharon already went. Yep. Okay. Top of the order. Elgar. So did, uh, did he end up doing damage to the bus? No, he, he missed you. He okay. didn't hit the DC. Elgar, you're in a weird room and there's lots of blood. What do you do? <laughs> um, so yeah, Elgar, just kind of hearing all the crazy crashes outside, is just like totally like, what the fuck? Um,. And really, there's not a whole lot to do but go forward and just sort of cautiously explore. So I'm going to draw my, my solar weapon. I'm going to give you a, as I move forward. a perception check of DC 12 to see the whole room. You get it. So I kind of scan the room with my, my robot eye. And, and what you see is Whoa. just the, the rest of it. There's not rubble. It's just very, very empty. The only thing that is odd are the the mangled blood wolf amalgamation of bone and blood, the skeleton and the footprints. There is a another skeleton in a shower, but it's it doesn't seem to be of importance. Is there anything of note in the bloodhound's carcass? No, it what it is bone? is it looks like two separate wolves that tried to form, but but couldn't, and then it ended up drowning in its own blood puddle. Like how the first wolf was mounding up, this one only got halfway and then stopped. Gotcha. And that's what you see. Well, this is all very disgusting. I just want to get the hell out of here and get back to the bus, so I'm going to move forward about 30 feet. Uh, you can move... If you run, you'll be um, fatigued at the end of it, but you can run up to four times your speed Ooh. if you want to just so that would... run and see what, what the footprints are all about. Yeah, I'll do that. That'll get me to the end, end of the room. Moving with a sense of urgency makes sense just to get out of here. And... This is a pretty ballsy time to be solving a mystery, though. No. When you get up to the front, what you see is the next hallway, and the next hallway has the footsteps go up straight to another puddle of blood, but a human skeleton or humanoid skeleton is sitting in the middle of it. The footsteps steps and the footsteps are walking toward you this whole time. So you're going backwards. Oh, okay. The footsteps continue up and you see the last door on the left that has a lot of blood coming out of it, a big old pool. You see a skeleton that tried to get to the front door or the furthest door, but it, it didn't it didn't work but you also see a, a gun sitting next to the skeleton mm. so you you get halfway up those sets of bloody footprints gotcha. and that's your turn can i somewhere in there can i draw my weapon just to have that at the ready yeah you ran far enough okay. just so it's well known i forgot to be declaring it <laughs> but i have three photon attunement points so yes as soon as combat started i'm ready i'm ready that, that is fine all right up next we have goal all right I want to snipe, ideally, with Audrey at the closest and, like, move to optimal positioning. Um, so be you do have a sniper. You could snipe this guy. He's within your sniping range. 
and you can see him. All the buildings are very low. Even though he's 175 feet away, you use a movement action to engage your sniping mode, and then you can shoot 250 feet away. Okay, I'll do that. Engage sniper mode. Do I have to click something in my sheet? Uh, no, you just say it. Uh, it just uses a move action is what that represents. All right, I, I yell it like I'm an anime character. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to hear it in Gull's voice then. <laughs> Engage a sniper mode. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do it. <laughs> All right, then I then I shoot. <laughs> just for, I love for it. Kicks. Sharoness is just blowing like speed lines behind you. <laughs> the bullet zips oh by, oh. and it hits a tree, and the tree <laughs> just kind of feels ashamed that. Such 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 a a weak bullet would hit it. Uh, you made the tree sad. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a sad tree now. Now Sharoness is going just because that's how we do it. Um, she shoots at the same, the exact same one again, except she can't use shoot twice because she also engages sniper mode. Oh, she hits. She hits the driver, and he didn't have a whole lot left because because of Ross's shot. Oh, geez the the vehicle goes veering into the the nearest building next to that tree as it hits the building uh it it crashes okay now we've got gusty's turn all right i'm just gonna keep barreling down this street as fast as i can that's a natural 20. that's such a good roll these piloting rolls are where it's at apparently this is great it feels great to roll things i am kind of attempting to like nudge this car over here if I can, but... You're attempting what? I mean, like, I'm I'm kind of trying to, like, as I'm steering off to the side a little bit, uh, if I can, I'd like to, you know, hit whatever trucks I can on the way, but if it turns into, like, a whole extra thing, and it's fine. They're, they're kind of, they're, they're keeping pace with you. Hang on, give me one minute. Austin, I hope you're not offended that I'm just driving away from your mystery no i kind of i kind of understand it <laughs> you can't quite turn on a dime to pick me up <laughs> i mean i could try i do kind of want to see how sharp this can turn you throw the e-brake <laughs> <laughs> just barreling boom boom i'm hoping i can i won't i won't tell you what i'm hoping but maybe i'll just will it into existence by thinking about it yeah that's the secret or whatever right <laughs> okay i'll tell you i'm hoping i can jump on a bloodhound and ride it <laughs> oh my god austin <laughs> that's that's thinking like a DD player oh okay so <laughs> you the DC is their KAC. You absolutely can hit these guys uh, for collision damage. Oh, sweet. I definitely want to just trample the hell out of them. But collision damage damages you too. I'm guessing... How many hit points does this thing I'm have? I'm guessing they have less than the bus. We have like almost 600 left. Yeah. Okay. So that was what it was. Yes, you can... It's their DC, their KAC is um, 11. That sounds acceptable. So you can absolutely hit them. Uh, but this this turn, you chose to drive straight, destroyed a bunch of stuff, yeah. which, which is totally fine. The next, next turn, there will be some thorough running over of things. Uh, it is the Thrasher truck turn. As the, the one that had missed you, he actually runs into into his friend at ramming speed oh, no. and I'm, I'm gonna roll it but he he does hit for 44 damage so all right they both both of them explode in a fiery heap of metallic carnage oh man because andrew had bumped them into the the buildings very good it's my master plan coming to fruition this little one, though, still driving up to you. The one on your back right, the one on your back left also drives up to you. A second one comes flying at you from the front, trying to ram you. <laughs> so I'm going to roll the, right. the Thrasher arms first. Uh, the first one attacks you with its Hydro Claw. 
Hydraulic claw? Just listen here, little man. You're not the first one to come this way. Oof. <laughs> I don't think that hits. It got a 17. Didn't hit. Second one. Ooh, hits no, for 17. That is... And they are specifically designed to attack Panquake buses. Okay. Now the one rolling up in front of you, the attack, and he must get uh, a piloting check. DC 17, and he gets it. So he so takes... 21 damage, and okay. you take 43 damage. <laughs> this is all fine. All right, next we have Elgar. We interrupt this episode to bring you fun facts about Panquake. The Bounty Hunter Troops is a group of individuals that all have a singular purpose. Make as much money as possible by using their very special set of skills. These bounty hunters view most other living things as nothing more than a mark, a potential mark, or an enemy. Not to say they are nothing more than an over-equipped group of zealous money mongerers. They are. They are also the most genius group of individuals that see the bigger picture. Even in times of need, they step in and act as deputies when society threatens to crumble or when the need arises. This sets them aside from the dentists, those forced and drugged into becoming tools of war. The individuals of the Bounty Hunter Truce have turned themselves instead into specialized tools of capitalism. The members of the Bounty Hunter Truce are allowed to worship any god they wish. However, most of them worship the god of action, the god Keanu. And now, back to the show. Ugh, this is all too weird. Elgar, with his, his weapon drawn, approaches the, the corpse at the end of the hallway to pick up its weapon. So I have a ranged weapon, ideally. Okay. Is the... Do I know... Is that door with all the blood by it, is that closed or open? That's open. When you walk by it, you can actually see inside for free. And I will let you describe what's in there. Hmm. Looks like a living quarters with a pool of blood in the middle. Footprints coming from the, the blood to the doorway. Looks like a table, too, with something on it. I do a perception check to to see what it is. Uh, yes, it's a DC ten. You got a twelve. It's a data pad. There's nothing else in that room other than what you described. That's the only item there. But you have picked up the the gun. It is a um, wave modulator. It does one d four fire damage, and you can switch it as a move action to sonic damage. It's got a range of thirty feet. All right, gotcha. and I believe. That is your turn. You now have this little this little gun. Awesome. And a data pad. Well, you haven't gotten to the data pad yet. Okay. Um oh yeah, it's yeah, gonna be sweet when you do though. Well, okay, no. You can actually go to the front door to and use up the rest of your movement. Okay. I'll do that. And when you pick up the data pad, you kinda reach over with your long arms and you find it. Yeah, I guess I'll I'll read it out loud into my com. Can I talk to everybody? Like, yeah. Is everybody too oh, far right. away to yeah, talk you to? Yeah, you can. I forgot about that. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to say, uh, hey, guys, I don't know what the hell is going on out there, but I found something. I'm going to I'm gonna do you a little story time right now, I okay? I use a story. Okay. It's uh, an audio log. It looks like it says, don't believe. Make the mark made modifying movements. Don't believe. The flame will cleanse. Don't believe. Kill them with kindness. Donation of blood. Don't believe. Cleans and flame. Don't believe. You made me do it. Don't believe. We like it that way. Laugh and cry. Remove your bones. Don't believe. We have always been this way. Don't believe. They have killed for us. Don't believe. Taste of power. Taste of joy. Don't believe. You will smile for us. Don't believe. Separate your flesh from bone. Don't believe. Yield believe whoa uh, sounds like some freaky ritual halfway shit. through that i started whistling a tune along with it <laughs> after he <laughs> finishes i just start singing don't believe like it's the catch and a chorus <laughs> i'm just singing that as i drive don't believe 
<laughs> I can't make heads or tails of this. Well, just make a note, take a screenshot of it or whatever, and we'll deal with it later. <laughs> uh, when Got he it. he reads it out to you, uh, he updates all your stuff. All right, that was Elgar's turn. Up next is Gull. I guess I will just get get this guy off the front of the car, shoot down, and try to snipe the driver. That nope. does not work. Nope. Nope. I rolled a one. Wow. Come on, Audrey. <sighs> I'm sorry. We just make such a great team, obviously. I'm being sarcastic. God, you sarcastic bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean that. We'll do better next Listen, time. Listen, we got to work on us, <laughs> okay? We need some us time. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Hi. Sharon S. I'm sorry. I'll, I, you, you, I'll swear I'll take you to the range later. <laughs> I'm not against that. All right. Well, that's my oh, turn. Oh, Sharon does not hit him either. Okay. Everybody shot at, at the guy. Didn't get it. Uh, up next is Gusty. Okay. I'm going to do some ramming here. So starting Roll with me. Roll me a, a piloting, then roll your ramming. Okay. See how this goes. And twenty-eight again. Just for good measure, roll your uh, your one d six with that. You got a twenty-eight okay. before the d six. So coming to a thirty-two total. Thirty-two. Now roll your ramming. <laughs> good God, this is all I'm ever doing. So you got the DC of nineteen. You did three hundred and forty-six damage to the Thrasher truck. <laughs> As the bus just slowly but surely crumples it like shredder and like secret of the ooze, yeah, man. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I just have to thanks for having my back, man. The secret of the ooze, him turned him into ooze. I could blow up the whole goddamn world with this thing. And and because you're so stupid big, still make your movement uh, of eighty because you can okay. move double double your movement. Next turn, I might attempt an unresponsible maneuver but we'll see how things go what's the name of my gun's former uh, owner Tuckus? yeah officer tuckus right? uh, okay oh, good so i'm giving her like a pep talk right now about like <laughs> we need to do better for tuckus do it for tuckus yeah i think we can definitely do it for tuckus he was the best thing in my life well i promise i'll never try to replace him but in my hands, I assure you, you will kill a lot of people. Go. Oh, that means that means quite a lot to me, and I am not being sarcastic. I'm trying to be genuine, even though I have a very sarcastic voice. I just want you to know that. Hey, never change. Actually, change a little bit <laughs> so we can. <laughs> Agreed. Okay, all the Thrasher trucks. Uh, three of them merge around the bus, and all three of them attack. First one misses, second one hits, the third one hits. So we've got 38 damage. Okay, that's from two different attacks, though. Yeah, two, su two successful attacks. Minus 38. One more comes running and up in front of you, and he performs the, the ramming speed. <laughs> Jeez. They are determined <clears throat> to ram you. Can I, uh... I mean, I see we're coming to the edge of the map here. Can I see something beyond this next street? Uh, yes. As soon as <laughs> as soon as I, I roll this, okay. oh, he gets it. You got twenty-seven. Oh. Okay, you take forty-seven <laughs> damage. Uh, when you actually look and you take time to uh just look and see what's in front of you, aside from all the trucks. You see, the next street is full of the most piles of skeletons you've ever seen. The, they are taller than the buildings themselves. You're kind of wondering, like, how did I not see all those skeletons? <laughs> like, it is, the streets are completely flooded with bones piled so high. And that's what you uh, see. Huh. Okay. Duly noted. All right. Up next is Elgar. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Austin, do you exit the building? Um, yeah, that, that's kind of where I'm thinking. So you see a bunch of buildings falling down Oops. all over the hey. place. You see several like pieces of Thrasher trucks. You see one that is just as flat as a pancake. What do you do? Oh, wow. 
Um, <laughs> You're right. so far away from oh. them. <laughs> I know. I'm like, what just happened? 60 feet away. Do I see any sort of like motorcycles or anything around? Just like the streets? <sighs> no. Left it's, it, it's just pretty barren. It's an abandoned uh outpost there's there's not much i mean you saw what was inside the buildings not much yeah but there's no like bicycle or like no there's a skeleton thing. under your feet <laughs> well i'm gonna check that skeleton out what's he got on it a really big smile just a skeleton he's just smiling up at you <laughs> like he's having a great day uh, no there's really nothing around you because of how bare it is yeah you could do your movement times four again and catch up yeah, it seems like I'm pretty sure running you go faster than the bus. I'm wondering, I was just kind of like looking at the route. Would it be judicious or wise of me to go down this way? And you said I could go up to... So you were inside, uh, roll me a perception. Because okay. you really don't know what's been happening outside. You mm -hmm. did your own little side mystery. Yeah. Oh. You know the thrasher trucks are attacking the bus with your perception <laughs> of 10. <laughs> yeah, I think I just want to book it down this alleyway. And I can go four times my speed? Yeah, three times four, 120. I just sort of just sprint it, hoping to kind of like catch up a little bit. So yeah, you run down the alleyway. The bus is bulldozing all these buildings. The thrasher trucks have like attached themselves and are ripping into the armor. Gull, you're next. Uh, the windshield broke uh, on that first one, so the driver is exposed. All right, well, I'll just make it simple. Go right yeah. for them. Anytime they take damage, their windshields break. I'll just say that for you. So it's easy to keep track. Okay, cool. Come on, Audrey. No, you get it. You're yeah. shooting the driver. The driver's exposed, oh, wow. and they don't really have any KAC. All right, uh, you shoot the... Oh, jeez. Okay. Uh, you shoot the driver dead, because remember the goblins are driving? All right. Uh, <laughs> and... That's right. These are goblins. <laughs> A little green head driving. <laughs> this makes so much more sense. One that explodes so much. It's like a theme with them. <laughs> I know. Uh, so on their turn, this this truck has to veer somewhere. If it survives, I doubt it. Um, the bus's turn. Speaking of, uh, oh, Sharon S. Actually, come on, Sharon S. She moves over here and takes a shot at the the other one. On Sharon S. She doesn't get it, guys. She really doesn't get it. Meow. All right, that was her turn. Okay, Gusty, your turn. Okay, this might be... Tell me what you're thinking, and we'll go through the rules. Well, it just occurred to me, I, I keep thinking of this in terms of a high-speed chase, and it is very much not that. Nope. <laughs> this is like watching tractors ram each other. So... <laughs> <laughs> I know um... Elgar's like catching up to you right now. <laughs> All right, is can I ram more than one of these at a time? Because it's so big, yes, but it's going to do damage to you. Okay. You can turn and and make a collision. All right, well, let, let me see if I can even pilot this properly. Yeah, make your pilot first. Oof. Ooh, yeah. But the collision, remember the collision DC here. is 19. Oh, yeah, not even with a, a six yeah, to help. not even with. It just brings it up to 18. Well, this is your first failed piloting check, so now I get to take it. Take it. Um, you, cool. you were trying to turn? Yeah. And you <laughs> actually veer off course. Oh, my God. Excellent. Oh, no, Elgar. <laughs> no, no, I'm like... I forgot you were there, honestly. I'm well positioned now. <laughs> I'm coming for you, buddy. This was the plan all along. Totally intentional. Trying not to run you over. So what happened was the bus veered, and as Elgar goes to the very end of the the alleyway, he sees two giant wheels just occupy the space he was about to be in as the building starts to rain down on him. Uh, Elgar, make me a reflex Save. Uh, you're old. Oh, oh no. Oh, yeah. I rolled uh, a natty one. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Now, Elder, <laughs> the piece of masonry falls down and hits you square 
in your good eye. Oh, not my good eye. Take 1d6 damage and you are blinded <laughs> for the next... Oh, shit. 1d6. For the next four rounds, you are blinded. Oh, man. So I only have my monocle? Yep. <laughs> and okay. even though you can use it, uh, it's like jarred you enough because it was a big piece of masonry. Gotcha. I'm going to shout back at Gus to, to quit peeking at me. Uh, your, your thermal, <laughs> your thermals work, but okay. for the most part, you can't see the buildings near you. You can just see the hot engines. Okay. That will do. That's where we are for that. Oh, not my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> He ran into his eyes, Dusty. <laughs> Next is all the trucks. Oh, Austin, I'm so sorry. So the good. trucks follow suit. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, We're going to do this, guys. Austin, make a <laughs> reflex save, DC 17. Okay. Oh, you get it. Oh, thank you. You take oh, half damage. Okay. <laughs> half of 28. Half of 28 is 14 damage. Yep. As Ouch. the truck literally <laughs> runs over most of you. Um, but it wasn't It wasn't even trying. There were so many things that just happened to you all at once. I know. I feel very... <laughs> and you didn't see it coming. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it, makes, it makes a lot of sense because I was not <laughs> expecting any of this. Elgar is having a fun day all of a sudden. Because mm. <laughs> his wine got run over. So Jeez. now all four of the trucks are on either side uh, or at each wheel, and all the claws hit at the same time. Here they come. First attack hits for 18. Second attack hits for 21. Oh my god. Third attack is a crit for 39. Oh my god. <laughs> Mother of Fourth god. one is a crit. <laughs> <laughs> for 19 Christ. and 17 what is happening <laughs> it's Jesus like watching a cutscene is getting fucked up so as they're ripping into your wheels <laughs> they're doing so much damage yeah Jesus what are we at like at what, okay what? I, I gotta go back through and yeah I'm gonna snipe these fucking things off the wheels Jesus I rolled two crits so I, I am sorry yeah well it's, it's dice for you. Okay, uh, so you're all there. That was their turn. Up next is Elgar. Okay, um, what does being blind effectively do to me? So in your character sheet, to under conditions, oh, yeah. I, I just selected you're blinded, and now that, yeah. it affects mm, a lot of things, and yeah. you're easier to hit, too. Am I within range of this Thrasher mobile? You have an attack of opportunity. You can hit that thing. No, I'm feeling pretty pissed off at this point. Cause like I was like, don't forget you have fourteen grenades. I, Sharon all, handed you ten. Yeah. I, let me tell you what I'm thinking though, because I'm fully fucking photon attuned right now. So I'm gonna supernova. I'm gonna go super saiyan on this thing and just explode. That's gonna be the coolest looking shit. It's more. It's more of like a, a reactionary thing. I'm just like angry and just about to just explode, and I do. So here we oh, go. Oh jeez, what did you do? <laughs> What did you do? Is what you should ask oh. <laughs> yourself. What did I do? Uh, here we go. Oh my god. You almost rolled max damage. Uh, <laughs> so this is Elgar just sort of like stumbling back, like grasping his eyes and then just like sensing the thermal energy off that engine and just being like... That's my dramatic reenactment. I appreciate it. They can't really. There's no real like reflex they can roll because he's he's already locked into movement. So that that just hits for 18 damage, and the track the the treads the on the left part of the Thrasher truck break. <laughs> it's still it's still moving, but it is smoking and smoldering. What else do you do? Hmm. So that was a standard action. I think I probably want to like move back a, a bit so I'm out of the pathway of this guy. And maybe take a, a couple steps backwards. You can move 30 feet, I suggest it. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back here. Maybe hide behind the corner there. 
Excellent. Didn't quite measure that, but that was about 30. Yeah. No, that was it. Uh, okay. Up next, we have Gull. Okay, I'm going to shoot this other one on the wheel. On the um, right since front that wheel? other one's almost dead. Yeah. I give Audrey a little bit of a pep talk. I'm sure we can do it this time. That does hit. Oh, thank you, uh, The driver's at half health. All right. Uh, it's, yeah, they're not doing good. And then I'll just... Um, I'll just move like to kind of the center. Yeah. Something. Because remember, they don't get their cover. Okay. Uh, if you go to the center, you won't be able right. to hit any of them because it's remember that's flat. You are on uh, the the front where you could see them. Yeah, you can see the front too. Uh, with, with that positioning where you're at the very front, you're pretty much above Gusty, just on the outside. Uh, okay. Sharon S. She points at the back. The back left car. One hits. Mm-hmm. Not sure. Um for one damage. Oh. Uh but the windshield. Oh no, that went that one's windshield's already broken. That actually hit the driver. Uh driver isn't he's not happy, but he's still doing really good. Gusty. Show me what you got. Oh man. Now I feel like all my the luck is gone. It's gonna Nope. Oh, huh, okay. 28 again. Give me a 1d6 on top of that, just to be sure. All right, that'll bring it up to, what, 33? 33. Okay, uh, where do you want to move the bus now that we have your piloting? Okay, uh, well, to the right, because I'm pretty sure I know that uh, Elgar is down there to the left. You can so you can turn the bus and not move forty feet towards Elgar, but you can still roll your collisions. Yeah, well, I want to hit at least this guy on the right here, and if possible, also this guy on the left. On the if right. you turn to the left, you can only hit the bottom right wheel, but mm-hmm. you can also hit the top left wheel. Huh. Okay. Well. Yeah, so I want to... I'm going to turn this direction. Turning to the right, you can get the bottom left wheel and the top right wheel. Okay. Roll your two collisions because you met met the thing already. And then, you know, sort of roughly point myself toward the the pile of bones. Where does that thing go? Okay, here's the first one. (laughs) And the second one. So that's... They will now pilot away from you or try to the first one doesn't get it Oof. and he takes 339 damage Ha-ha. and you take four damage because it's damage dealt <laughs> not damage delivered <laughs> and the second one does not get it takes 308 damage and you take 14 damage all right so you said that was 4 and 14 damage. Yep. We're at 18 damage. <laughs> Two trucks left. And you turn and pivot yourself towards the skeleton bone thingy. I just want to say, I have a suspicion about what these piles are. Gusty Adams is blissfully unaware, but I'm furious at you right now, Bowen. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh-huh. I'm just an innocent GM. Oh God, okay. <laughs> Nothing yeah. about this game has been innocent at all. <laughs> no, it hasn't. I'm sorry. No, I'm not. Moving on. The truck's turn. The thrasher truck, upset that you did the bad thing, runs into you. <laughs> This thrasher, tr- thrasher truck simply digs into you, so you've got a, a collision and um, an attack. Here's the the attack. Gets okay. it for 15, and then the collision. Uh, give me a piloting check. Uh, yeah, just DC 17. That'll be uh, an 18. You get it. Cool. So no damage is given on either side because he didn't hit you. Okay. So he skitters forward. Because he missed a broadside of a barn. All right, that's their turn. Because there's only <laughs> two left. Doing that a lot. You're driving a giant, giant building. Elgar, you're next. All right. Where um, even are you? It looks oh. like he's right. I next see him. To that thrasher, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. 
So this is my third round of blindness. This is your second round of blindness. Second round of blindness. Because the um, round you you gain it doesn't count towards the rounds. Okay. Um, this is what I'd like to do. Tell me how it would go down. That truck in front of you is on its last wheel. It's on its last wheel, and it's it's about thirty feet away, forty foot. Mm -hmm. So it's a little out of my range. So I'd like to uh, activate my photon mode again because I just got an attunement mode and do stellar rush. Uh, it's so outside. Wanna... Oh wait, no, you can move up to twice your speed. Yeah, so it would be within yeah. range if I charged it and just like wailed on it with my solar fist. Do you want to use your solar fist or your your stellar rush? Because your stellar rush, you can do a bull rush and it's two d six fire damage, or you can do stellar rush and have no, you get no negatives. That's what it is, and hit it with your laser. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm thinking of doing my solar weapon. Yeah. So move up your speed. You get no negatives and just do a regular attack. Okay. Or twice your speed. Here we go. Ooh. Hey, that's yep. That that hits. Uh, you rolled a 19 and got nine stupid damage, and the truck just explodes in front of you and <laughs> wreathes you in fire, but you're so badass, your laser I'm protects you. <laughs> I already wreathed myself You're just in like fire. a blind, <laughs> flaming <laughs> kung fu <laughs> god right now. Your solar <laughs> fire outdoes the regular fire, and everything's just... just it's just fire. Orange. <laughs> Everything's fire! I'm just running through destruction right now. <laughs> no, really, you are. Exploding <laughs> on things. You're doing your best. Yeah, you're doing your best impression of the bus right now. <laughs> no, really? <laughs> that, that's, that's good. That's some good shit. I feel like T-1000 as he's just like running down the road. Actually, it blows up so hardcore, it just... it starts crumbling the building to your left as the bus oh, crumbles God. everything oh, to your right. Oh, God. Everywhere in front of you is falling down, and it only counts as rough terrain. You can still move through it, but just so you know, okay. all the buildings are falling down around you. Okay. All right, that was Elgar's turn. Goal, you're next. So I blow out my frog throat. <laughs> and, big, and rib it loud and just shoot. Yeah. Well done, Goal. I, I guess. I guess. I don't know. Unload. Ho! Yeah! You shoot <laughs> the driver square in the eye again, and it just drives and smashes into the skull bone pile that the bus is currently headed towards. All the baddies are gone. Well, we did it, Gus. It was you and me. Um. So up next <laughs> is Gusty, and Gusty... As soon as uh, you see that car hit the bones, you get a, a, a call on your calm. Do you answer uh, it? All right, I answer it. Hello, I'm Gusty Adams. Hello. The chess board is ready when you are ready to play the chess. I have been seeing some things outside, but I just wanted you to know that the chess board is erect. <laughs> Gotta be a better way to say that. <laughs> no, that's the perfect way to say that. <laughs> All right, I'll be right down. Just uh, keep two hands on that board. Uh, why are you too busy to play the chess with Bartend? It's okay. No, no, not my too friends. Busy, just... Oh, what? I just gotta, just gotta see a bus about some bones real quick. Oh, okay. I guess I will wait some more. You, you go ahead and be white. You take the first turn. I'll be right down. Oh, I like to be black though. But, well, maybe black can go first this time. But that is not how the game is played. Well, I'm not trying to be difficult here. I just have a. Let's just have a thing. <laughs> Pressing matters. <laughs> you seem kind of distracted. Are you sure you are yeah. not too busy to play chess with me? Like when All my right. friends you know tell what? me that they are going to, and then they do not. It's okay. I, I understand. Pull the bus to a stop. That's a free action, actually. I can just stop it. Yes. 
Why okay, didn't just... we do that? Because <laughs> the trucks were going to screw you up. They would get. Okay. I thought this was a speed situation. I thought we couldn't stop. <laughs> I afraid the Keanu and everything. The, the trucks, the just GM wise, the trucks, there was going to be eight or nine of those. And if all of them surround you, they would rip that bus apart. Yeah. True. True. I guess I just didn't ask. <laughs> Well, you were busy, <laughs> and anyway, so you stop the bus, stop the and bus. you hear Bonten go, whoa, and you hear a big loud thump, and you hear tons of pieces just go everywhere. And oh, people, he lost his chess erection. I told him to hold on to it, and he says, "Oh no, the chessboard has broken." Oh, and he he clicks off. You just hear static. I uh, I get up from the pilot chair. Which go go to... make a reflex save DC oh, ten. Shit, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm on the roof. Yeah. <laughs> we go flying into the fucking bones. Watch. Oh, you get it. Oh yeah. Sharon does not. Sharon S goes flying. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> she goes. Oh, no, not Sharon. <laughs> and she goes flying into the bone pile. And you hear her just yell, I'm okay. I'm willing to believe her. That's good. Do the super suit on. This is a really weird pile of bones. And that's all she says as she starts walking her way back to you. I'm, uh, so I'm going to, before I walk out of the room, stop at Gus and hold out my hand to shake. Uh, okay. Get, are you, you stopped. <laughs> Can I open my eyes? Oh, yeah, you, you would open them. I'm done now. Oh, oh, geez. Uh, were you trying to do so? Oh, it's a handshake. Yeah, okay. Yeah, he shakes your hand. I'm still pinned to this thing. You're still gonna have to drive uh, us. It's good good to meet you, though. I just wanted to wanted you to know that I think our friendship is going well so far. I mean, it feels and like you did. I respected my boundaries and, Absolute and I have saved your life. Terrible job despite driving. Despite your criticisms. Anyway, I have something to go do, so I'll see you in a bit. And I walk back out and I go to uh, I go to Baten to, to help him put the chessboard back together. And Gus just says, all right, I'll just hang out here. If that's how you like it. When you go downstairs, um, nothing else has really changed. Everyone's still asleep. Uh, hot Dog Joe is just cleaning um, the hot dog stand, just totally nonplussed by the outside situation. Hello, uh, Joe. Hey, Gusty Adams. How's it going? Not so bad. You? Oh, just cleaning the hot dog cart. Uh, good I man. felt one little shake. Is everything going on? Well, is everything good outside? Far as I know. You might care to look out a window, though, just to make sure. Nah, I got my hot dogs. I'm good. <laughs> and he continues cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but when you... <laughs> <laughs> it's a man of simple pleasures. <laughs> Polished in his hot dog stand. The legend in the bounty hunter go. Yeah. Hot dog. Uh, but when you get down to bot end, he's just wink, wink. Oh, penis joke. Ha ha. <laughs> oh, you're so you're pretty clever there. You're the one who had a character <laughs> erect a chessboard. Not so. just a character. He is an ogre. They use words. Outpost sixty now. <laughs> Thank you. It finally came back and made someone laugh. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> uh, anyway, you you go down there. You see the chess pieces everywhere. Uh, the the chessboard is broken into many pieces, and you see Baten just holding them, uh, trying to put them back together, but poorly. Is is there anything? within my knowledge engineering that can make this chessboard whole again. Uh, you know like that... 27. Oh, good grief. Yeah, you can actually vulcanize from the debris uh, and make your own adhesive just from, like, the trucks outside and the wreckage. Uh, <laughs> engineering, because okay. you don't see any tape nearby, so you have to make of your course, own uh, super glue. You know how to do that with a natural 20 uh, you can gather the materials you need to fix his chessboard better than it was before you can even 
carve or engineer little new pieces that are more tailored to his his taste. All right. And that'll that'll take about ten minutes. Yeah, I'm gonna tell him I'm gonna go scavenging, but he just. To hold right on, you'll get your chess game. He doesn't and say I... anything, he just like holds the one piece that isn't damaged. <laughs> All right, I guess I go build this dude a chess board then. Alright, what's everyone else doing? I'm using my I yeah. did my rolls there, a powerful leap to from the top of the bus to try to like get on top of the like is it it's a really high like skeleton yeah uh, uh sharon s was yeah. able to fall into it no problem um i'd say it, it's only 20 feet below you but it's massive right i want to try leaping as far like i'm scouting like get high point oh no you're 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 on the highest thing in the area like you beat everything else by 20 feet okay. uh, the bone pile is like 30 feet because remember, the bus is roughly okay. 60 feet tall. Well, all right. Well, I guess I want to, like, can I jump past the map? Like, where, like, where Beyond the, the map there is just desert. So there's what it looks like is uh -huh. this, uh, okay. this big wall of skeletons and bones was dragged here and piled up. And that's all you know. Beyond that is the desert. Um, it, it, it doesn't look like anything good happened because... Like, there are other skeletons peppering this place, like, all over the place. Uh, but, yeah, it all comes to the the bone skeleton pile. Mm. Uh, you are you, you are there, and it has been said that Gus the bus driver knows a lot of stuff. All right, I climb in and talk to Gus. So, what's with the bone pile? Okay, what bone pile? I... <laughs> <laughs> please please understand my situation. I can't see the driver's screen. I'm stuck to this wall. There's a big bone wall outside here in station 69 or whatever. Um, looks like a bunch of bones dragged up into a big pile. Know anything about that? Uh, that doesn't sound normal. Uh, now post 69 wasn't supposed to have anybody in it. It was supposed to be, <laughs> well, decommissioned because we kept building it up, you know, if you have Outpost 1 and it crumbles for whatever reason, you got to rebuild it. So this was Outpost 69. We got, well, honestly, we wanted a landmark we could laugh at. <laughs> so mm. what ended up happening was we started building Outpost 1 again. And that's what uh, Outpost 87 is right now. There's one more Outpost and that's Outpost 31. Maybe we have a terrible naming system because it changes a name every time we have to add to it or rebuild it from scratch. Yeah, it seems... Seems like you should rethink that, but, uh, so, hmm. Do they just not know math? Are they just saying <laughs> numbers when they build things? Yeah, what they, what they end up doing is Outpost 87 is Outpost 87 because it was constructed and worked on 87 times. Oh. <laughs> okay. It's really confusing. There could be two 87s. Technically, well, no this this one stopped at sixty nine. There's one more that's thirty one, and then there's eighty seven. Okay. Well, um, as far as my route goes. Okay, so we're gonna keep going. Like we're going to thirty one. Uh, it's nowhere near us. Listen, was this our stop? Like, no. why did we just drive? Okay. We where we go? Where the fuck were we going? Okay, man? this like, we're this <laughs> is we were you were going to Uppercase City. And okay. what happened was you were attacked and everything led right. up to this attack and Gus was like veer over to that so the buildings can slow down the trucks. Oh, okay. I get you so that. it wasn't just like, because if it was just driving on the road, the trucks would have destroyed your, your vehicle. So he he he, desi he just suggested going, driving through all these old buildings he knew no one was in, well, for the most part, uh, just so that you could have a fighting chance. And it worked. All right, I use my intercom and tell the other guys what I'm finding out and ask if they want to investigate this outpost or should we get back on the road? I mean, I'm not too quick to go sifting through the giant pile of bones, but... Mm -hmm. What about you, Elgar? Um... Oh, right. Elgar, how are you doing? Over yeah, there, how are your eyes? <laughs> <laughs> we kind of just went and did our own things. 
just been running this whole time. <laughs> um, Elgar, Elgar just wants a hot dog right now. That's all you can think about. <laughs> That's he, he would much rather get on the bus and like get the hell out of here because that whole the whole bloodhound situation just weirded him out. All right, well, I'm gonna do a cool, really quick little investigation while you get yourself a hot dog. Then, like, okay, what do you investigate, Ross? Um, in the bone pile, I don't know, like anything more about. Can I find out anything more about these bones? You can take like, a twenty and like search for like. 20 minutes or 30 minutes um what would if you take a 20 what is your score 28 you know after sifting around these this bone pile that these are just bones the most unsettling thing though is how they got there that's the mystery there's nothing particular about the bones there's no markings on the bones they are just void of all flesh no, like, no, you said it's desert beyond that. No, like, tracks. Correct. Like, they were, okay, that's It is only okay. desert and haze beyond those piles. Huh. All right, well, I make a little note of this place, take a few pictures, um, and I get back on the bus. Like, All right. Uh, Austin, you getting your hot dog? Yeah. Um, does that return any, like, HP or anything? Uh, I need my stamina. Even though it's from Hot Dog Joe, no, but it uh. it is the best <laughs> hot dog you have had. Okay, I'm very satisfied with my hot dog. Gusty. Yeah. Uh, Ross searched the bone pile for 30 minutes, didn't come up with anything. I'll go get some hot dogs. You finish up getting your adhesive and you put the board together. All right. Well, I start setting it up then. Excellent. Um, Sharon S actually dug through the, the equipment chest and found an industrial laser and freed Gus, the bus driver from the murder Lance. Uh, he took some damage. I just thought he liked it over there. <laughs> <laughs> so as the day continues, Gusty ends up playing a fair game of chess with Batend, just making a real good friend. Elgar finally gets some sleep after the wacky, wacky day he had. Gull starts piecing things together because he's used to puzzle pieces and mysteries because that's what he has to do for his, his bounty hunting job. As the bus reverses out of this <laughs> completely decimated outpost 69 there's maybe six buildings left if that there's fire and there's no more thrasher trucks as you guys head back on the road and make your way to uppercase city to to end not end the day but to end your bus ride once and for all we did it you guys Woo! we saved the planet <laughs> nice Job well done. You do get resolve points back because even though it's like eleven thirty, the uppercase city is still eight hours away. Oh, <laughs> so we're, we're getting a full rest then. Before, yes, uh, everything goes there. back to normal. Okay, cool. Yeah. No one, no one got HP hurt. So yeah, that's where we will end the game. <laughs> Sounds good, man. No sun. <laughs> and uh. Just way to go on making all of that, making all that work. Yeah, that got epic. And so because of that, you have all reached level three. Oh, fuck what? yeah. Which is a very important <laughs> level. I know what I'm going to be doing on Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Way to go, guys. That was a great game. That was a lot of fun. You, you did a lot of great teamwork, even though people are falling out and running through buildings and solving mysteries. <laughs> <laughs> all in a day's work yeah in my head too most of that match I kept thinking like we were going really fast <laughs> I know <laughs> yeah me too 